Hello, welcome into Groomer's Take. You know, we're not too far away from football season. We're not too far away from hockey season. We're in the middle of a crazy MLB playoff race. But let's stay in the now. And right now is a perfect time to restart Groomer's Take after taking a little bit off here. I'm currently watching golf, BMW Championship. But we're going to talk more golf in a little bit because this episode starts with Canada World Juniors, yes, that's right, in August, winning gold against Finland 3-2 in overtime. This whole tournament was a bit weird for me. It was a bit weird. I, I, You know, in the winter, it's Christmas time. You're after the holidays. Boom, Boxing Day. Hockey's on. Let's go watch every single game. I maybe watched one round robin game. But hey, it's hockey. It was back. I'm glad to have it on. Canada, holding on, eh? Hey, 2 nothing lead almost blow it at one point in the game you're thinking okay Canada's gonna win this thing for nothing uh the shots were seven nine one or something halfway through the first end of the first period all of a sudden it's ten nine Finland cr- crawled all the way back I say the last part of that entire game maybe even more Finland was the better team out chanced ultimately outshot um but we got to talk about the save you know they talk about the golden goal and everything could this have been the golden save well maybe at the world junior level it absolutely was mason mctavish pulling not not even just pulling and the first look you see it's very odd looking right like you're like okay well where is he compared to and then you see the overhead shot and where his body was and how much more that puck could have traveled before hitting a stick and then after hitting a stick and it just went down I mean the the slow-mo replay even the look on his face I was thinking what could possibly be going through his mind at that moment stops it it could not have gone any farther he takes a couple drags at it to get it out Bedard was there as well the Finland player that was in the crease had his hands in the air what an absolute save we circle back go down the rink Kent Johnson buries it. What a first save by the goalie, Hakala, I want to say. The first save was incredible, but Johnson's there to put it in. They did review to make sure Finland didn't score, but we all saw it unbelievably close. Sitting there watching the game with a buddy, and we keep saying, it's got to be Connor Bedard, right? It's got to be him. Like, let's go put your name out there if it's not even more enough, you know? And as soon as he gets on the ice, it just seems like it turns into all chaos, just absolute chaos because of the skill that he has and how fast he can skate and the two chances that he had. But then a couple plays get mixed up. Mason McTavish kind of causes or ultimately causes the three-on-one to get that chance that almost went in. But also the goalie, uh, sorry, Garand, I believe, Durand, Twice he could have covered the puck and he didn't. That's the excitement of three on three. You want to keep the puck moving because these chances could can come boom like that. But that second time when he lets the puck drop, I'm just thinking, get a whistle. Like let's get a fresh start here. Canada was dominating in the faceoff circle, um, but ultimately it didn't happen. They go down the other way. They score. The the atmosphere in the building was awesome. You know you didn't see a lot of that throughout the tournament. I think they have to. I would work on something with these bigger venues. I mean. Do it in a smaller venue for some of these games. Pack the building, fill the building, and then for these bigger games, a Canada in, quarter, semis, you know, get back into a bigger venue and you have it. But that was unbelievable. And now we just have a few, what, four or five months until we're right back at it again. So that's exciting to think about. Mason McTavish earns the MVP of the World Juniors with eight goals, nine assists for 17 points in seven games. I think that ties somebody, uh, maybe Braden Shan or something at 18. Anaheim Ducks prospect and I'm quietly putting together one of the very fun teams to get look forward to to watching that they're going to be pretty solid there um so look forward to that Anaheim fans Toronto Blue Jays sure let's circle around here a month ago half a month ago two weeks ago you could have been saying what the hell is going on and I was one of those people saying what the hell is going on at the trade deadline I was like okay cool decent pieces but you could have got something better you could have got another lefty arm. I mean, the, if you get to the playoffs, you're not putting Kikuchi out there, right? Maybe put him in the pen, get an inning out of him, but you're going to be rolling three guys anyway. But just there was nothing there to help the starting rotation. Brought in some arms for the bullpen, and I would have wanted like another bit of a stud to help this lineup. Bringing in Bradley Jr. was actually really great from Boston after he got released. A veteran presence. Um, but they were still struggling, and I'm a, bit, I'm a bit concerned on the injury front. And then you just got to sit there, right? And I sit there, and I think we're only in August, and baseball is insane. 
September's going to be absolutely crazy with all these races, but the Jays now go into New York, who has been struggling. Aaron Judge saying, um, what do you say? Something about the dugout. Like, we got to get more more vibes in the dugout or a better atmosphere or whatever, whatever he was saying. And he's absolutely right. And if anyone's going to say anything now in the Yankees, he's the guy. He's crushing bombs. But right now, you know, let's sit back and relax this September. The Jays are going to have to battle to get into a wild card. But they have the team to do it. they got to start picking it up. This Kikuchi thing isn't great. Boba struggling. Struggling. If that was a name they didn't want to put on the table to get Juan Soto, then they're getting bit for it right now, at least. Jays will be fine. I gotta get down to the game. Maybe in September. Let's get down there. Uh, let's get... So, the MLB trade deadline. Talk more about it. San Diego Padres. Land Juan Soto. Give up a bunch, but this is the time to do it. And then Fernando Tatis Jr. goes out and gets an 80-game suspension. 80 game suspension for a banned substance now i i'm kind of on the fence with with this kind of stuff first of all i look at it and i think in your dressing room in your clubhouse have a big ass sign a big sign with all the banned substances on it and then when you want to take a pill for whatever from a trainer you want to go grab it on your own Take a look at what's in it. Let me take a look. Oh, oh no, can't have this. I can't have this because if I do, I can't play baseball for 80 games. Teammates were all over him. GM was all over him. The coach was all over him. Just talking about maturity. Players saying we have more than enough in this dressing room, in this clubhouse to, to win. Um, this goes back to, of course, Tatis Jr. injuring himself in a motorcycle accident last off season or whatever yes there's some time to grow up and to realize that you're a baseball player and there's a lot of money on you smarten up and then of course there's the ones that you feel bad for the guy uh because any one little mistake and you get crucified by a lot of people right but i think this this is more of a little mistake to me your team just moved a lot of pieces to win now and now they're going to do it without you um I don't know. It's a bit weird to me. But ultimately, let's think about what we're putting in our bodies here. And the thing that was that was probably banned is apps probably does nothing or whatever. I mean, I don't... What's the point? I don't know. Didn't look into it. Don't really care. PGA Tour versus Live Golf. I'm not ta... I don't care. The groomers take here. We don't... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter about, like, the... The, the the court dates and the the suing or whatever these people are doing. First of all, Patrick Reed is the guy that comes out and says, well, I'm going to sue in these people because of this. Those people are probably not the only people in the world that think you're a bit of a douche. So the, the players on the tour think you are a douche. So don't worry about that. And then you got Bryson and Phil like leading the charge here. This is where I sit back as a fan, and as I have golf on right now, the BMW Championship shout-out, I like to watch golf shots. I don't care who's taking them. Well, sort of do. But if the PGA Tour is on and Liv is on at the same time, I'm watching the PGA Tour. That's all there is to it. I just like watching golf shots. They're a lot of fun, and they're great. I'm going to make a huge effort to be back a lot more let's go let's call this a new season of groomers take why not uh season wow am i maybe on season three here kind of sort of season three we're i think we're running up to 100 episodes that's pretty cool i hope to see a lot more of course it's all on me let's talk sports a lot more hockey's coming baseball mlb playoffs nba will be firing up and i'm gonna get red hot and just go on a friggin' tangent here and there and lose my mind, probably mostly because of the Toronto Maple Leafs. Good to see you. Groomer's take. See ya. Bye-bye.